So uh, somebody actually asked me to scrape some Amazon reviews for them the other day, and I figured, hey, this might actually be a, a fun thing to put up on YouTube. So who, who is this really for, and what, what are we gonna do? So in brief, people who wanna learn a little bit of coding, we're actually gonna do some, some real hands-on web scraping with Amazon, and we're gonna actually talk about some issues that you commonly run into when you're trying to do web scraping. It's not like a, it's not like a Mickey Mouse example, it's kinda complicated. And uh, if, if you actually know how to code, you're just looking for some code to modify, uh, this code should be working as of Thanksgiving 2020. So you can just look in the video description and, and find that and get going. And what is our goal? We're gonna try to write simple and modular code, not get very fancy. You can always get fancy when you use it on your own project. So what are we doing here? So first video, getting set up, getting the page HTML, maybe we'll use requests, maybe we'll use Selenium. Uh, and, and video two, we're gonna talk about how do you use Beautiful Soup? And I'm gonna share with you the mental model that I've developed over the years for web scraping. There are some nuances and gotchas and maybe you'll pick up a few cool things. In video three, we'll talk about how do you, how do you take the data that we scraped, get it into a usable format. Uh, we're gonna use pandas just cause it's great. And we'll save it to a CSV or do something like that. So uh, just getting set up. I'm using Anaconda on this computer. As long as you have a modern Python environment, maybe 3.5 or 3.6 or better, I think I'll be using a feature called f-strings, uh, which I think is 3.5 or 3.6, I don't know. But in any event, if you're using Conda, here's how I got my environment set up, Conda create pi 3.8, that's the name of the environment. And I did um, uh, Conda install uh, these, uh, these packages, Jupyter Request, Pandas, BS4, Selenium, and I opened up a Jupyter Notebook. So let's get this party started, people. Um, what product are we checking out, by the way? Um, we're checking out this heat storm uh, heater, and it looks like a great heater. My office gets a little bit cold in the winter. I'm looking to upgrade my heater game here. So um, yeah, that, that's what we're talking about here. Um, looks like it's a great heater, unless it burns your house down. So, you know, look out for that. But um, I have a Jupyter Notebook set up. I have a few imports, requests, pandas, BS4. Uh, maybe we'll use Selenium. I don't know yet. I want to keep it short and simple. Focus on the web scraping part. So first of all, we have URLs. Um, this is the main reviews page. And when you start actually clicking next, like uh, down here at the bottom, next page, next page, so on and so forth. These are, are the kind of URLs that get generated. And really the only difference is next underscore page number, next underscore page number, and at the, the end of it, page number equals two, page number equals three. So it's a pretty simple pattern. You could programmatically create these URLs. Not that big of a deal. I'm just gonna go with three for now. So uh, what the hell is this? Um, well. Amazon's pretty clever. If you just make a request using Python, so I'll actually, I'll just do it real quick so you can see. Um, let's just grab this URL just for the sake of uh, demonstration. So I'll say response is equal to, you're gonna use requests to get this URL. Go get that URL. Check out the response. The response is gonna say, uh, it's 503, it's not happy. Of course we want the response to be 200. Let's actually look at the text um, of the response object. It's a property on the response object. Um, it, it's talking about like, you know, if you want to access Amazon data, use our APIs or whatever, they don't want you scraping their site. How do they know this? They know this because if you just use request.get with the URL and you don't provide any additional information like this, this header string, it, it's, it, it knows it's Python. It's just gonna block you. So. How did I get this crazy looking header string? Um, let me show you. So if you actually go to, um, uh, what you might call, if you go to the page, right? And I'm, I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna hit Shift Command C to open up Chrome DevTools. So if we actually open that up and we go to network and I reload the page, see up here you have different types of, of you know, things that are being requested, like, you know, XHR, which is like Ajax, JavaScript assets, docs. So if you go to doc and you go to the first one, which is like the actual page itself, right? And on the left here, 
if, if I control or kind of like left click on it and I copy the, uh, the thing as curl, and curl is a command line HTTP tool, which you've probably seen. And then if you go to curl.trillworks.com and you paste in the curl command, it converts it into Python automatically. And all I did was I grabbed this headers dictionary and that's what's actually going on in my browser. So if you do that, you'll at least be able to make some requests to Amazon. I don't know how well this will scale, but if you're just trying to make five or a few dozen or maybe a few hundred, if you space them out, this will actually work. So that's where I got that, this crazy looking header string. I don't really know what, what all this means, but it, it works. So that's step one, actually getting uh, a basic response to work. Um, so now when we use request.get, I pass in the first page, right? Page is zero, it's just that first URL. And the one thing is all these URLs have common HTML structure that we're gonna take advantage of. We don't have to change our logic based on whether it's the first page or page one or page two, uh, et cetera. And you know, now that I think about it, this page, like maybe you could even do like page one and that would be the same thing as the all reviews page. Who cares? I don't know. Um, so now I pass in the keyword argument headers is equal to headers. Uh, everything will work out there. Now, look, for Python noobs, right, I could have called this moose. And um, I just would have passed in moose, right? Just I, I remember years ago when I was learning, like, why is it the same thing on each side? Okay. Um, so that should work. It, it's still worth checking out the text object of it, though, just because Amazon's kind of sneaky. You never know. They could start returning 200 just to mess around with you, and it still says the same thing. But you could obviously see, like, there's real content here. So uh, let's keep going. Now, how do we how do we start parsing this, right? It's just it's just tons of HTML. What are, how are we going to get the reviews from it? Well, what we need to do is we need to what Beautiful Soup does is is you pass in HTML, or you can pass in any any string really. And it knows how to parse tags and structure data out of the string. I use it sometimes to parse XML because XML is just a bunch of tags. So HTML, as you all know, it's like opening and closing tags, like H1. And, you know, the, how do you close the H1? It's like that. So it's pretty easy to, like, write, like, a, a parser. Not easy, but it's, it's, a, it's a tractable problem. You can do it. So we create the soup object with the, the text property of the response. Let's do it without the, the text property, right? Let's make some errors. Type response has no length. That's because RESP, that variable, it, it's just the, the thing that request returns, which has many properties like text. So hopefully that's useful if you're kind of a noob. So uh, now we have this soup object and, and the, the kind of the string property, if we look at it, is just, you know, the HTML. So what can we do with it? In the next video, we're going to take a look at actually figuring out how to go from this soup object to all the different reviews on the page. So I'm going to stop right here, and then we're going to kick off that next video. So see you then.